Hi friends, and thanks so much for being here. Today I wanna to share some tips and techniques for using a pretty common tool in paper crafting, pencils, colored pencils. Now I wanna share some techniques and some ideas you can use with any types of pencils. But as we get farther into this, you're going to notice that these pencils are special because these are watercolor pencils and you can do some really, really cool techniques with them. Let me show you some of these things. Before we get started with looking at some techniques and things, I wanna show you one of my favorite things about these watercolor pencils in particular. Now, let's say you're in a hurry and you're not doing a great job with coloring whatever project you are working on. I'm gonna do some scribbling here. You can see it's not very even. With these watercolor pencils and an extra tool called blender pens, look what you can do with this color on this project. You can blend that and make it look so smooth and pretty with no effort at all. So like I said, I wanna show you some neat things today. This was just to show you that these are pretty special, uh, but I have lots more neat things to share with you. So let's talk about these watercolor pencils. And like I said, a lot of the things I'm gonna be talking about here, you can use with any pencil, so stick around. Now, these are a type of watercolor pencil, or a type of colored pencil designed specifically to work with water to create unique watercolor effects. But like I've mentioned, you can use these just like normal colored pencils. Few things about the way I like to use these, which some of these apply to your normal pencils as well. One, I don't sharpen my pencils very often. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well, but with my white pencil right here, I have almost completely used up that tip and I have not sharpened this again on purpose. I like to have a flat edge on my pencils because that flat edge really helps you to color more evenly. Now, if I bring this back in, I'll show you what I mean. Now, I'm going to color with the sharp point here and now I'm going to turn it around to that flat edge and I'm going to color with that flat edge here. Now that's a lot lighter color, but if I push harder, I can get that darker color and it's so much more even. So that's why I don't sharpen my pencils a lot. I don't sharpen them unless I need to. Now, when I do need to sharpen them, I use just an inexpensive pencil sharpener such as this one. Couple things about the types of ink and paper I like to use. Uh, for stamping, let's say I'm gonna stamp an image and color it in with these pencils. Now, if I am just going to color with the pencils and I'm not adding any water, I'm not using blender pens, it doesn't matter what kind of ink I could use. I can use water-based ink, I could use permanent ink, doesn't matter. Now, if I am going to use those blender pens or water painters or adding water of any type, I do want to use stays on ink if possible uh, so that my image doesn't bleed when I add that water or when I start using those blender pens over the top. Also about paper, you can use these on any type of paper, regular white cardstock, colored cardstock, it doesn't matter. If you want to get the absolute best results for this, for example, this blending to get that really smooth color of of coloring, I was gonna say ink, but it's not ink. Then you wanna use shimmery white cardstock if possible for some of the techniques I'm gonna share here in a little bit. You may also want to use watercolor paper, but like I said, you can use any type of cardstock, so don't feel like you have to have a special kind to use these and to get started with them. Let's look at some basic use for them. Let's do some coloring, that's why we're here. So I will start, I like that these have the colors on the ends of them. So I wanna use red, I wanna color these apples. I will mention all of the stamped images I'm using today came from two stamp sets right here, the Cheerful Basket and the Cottage Rose, which I think are a couple of really neat new stamp sets. So I'm going to find that flat edge and I just start coloring. Now, a lot of times I use a either a swirling motion or just a back and forth motion. I try to keep try to keep those lines going the same direction. When you start coloring all sorts of which ways, then you may end up with some funny lines that may not really look look ideal unless you get out those blender pens and then you saw what happens with them and you can really blend everything together really nicely. So we're going to do lots of 
lots of different examples here of what you can do. Now, right now, I am just coloring. I am not doing anything special. I'm not doing any shading. I am just coloring in these apples with this red pencil. I'm getting a pretty light effect. Now, if I want to, I can go back and color over these heavier and get a darker effect. And in just a second, we'll do a little bit of shading. But I want to color in all these apples first. Now, if I want to do some shading, what I can do is come in in the spots where there would be less light hitting the item, hitting whatever it is that I'm coloring, and add some extra color. So on an apple, because they're round, there will always be less light hitting at the bottom. As assuming your light source is coming from above like a sun. Also on the sides, I always shade extra on the sides of round items, for example. So on the sides of these and at the bottoms, I'll come in and add a little bit extra and you can see the difference that that makes. Now back in here behind these other two apples, there's definitely going to be a shadow in there. I'll add some extra color over here on the sides and do one or two more. And then you can compare how this looks to those other apples over here on the left side that I have not done any shading on. So definitely starts to take on a more realistic, more natural appearance when you start adding in some of that shading. And this is not, I am not doing anything special besides pressing a little bit harder. And this is something you can definitely play around with. What I found with shading is no matter what I do, if I add some darker colors in certain areas and leave other ones lighter, it almost always looks more realistic, even if the shading isn't really in exactly the places it should be. It just adds to adds to the realistic effect of whatever I'm creating. Let's do this basket. And with the basket, something like wood grain, I am okay with having some irregular spots if they go in the direction that would be natural. So chances are with a bushel basket, the wood grain on this would be going back and forth. So if my lines go back and forth, left and right, then most likely they're going to look realistic. Now, when I get to these other spots in between, those are going up and down, of course. So here I would want my lines to go up and down. Now on this, I didn't think about this on the ones I already colored, but the one I'm, so I'm doing now I'm going to try, I'm going to add a little bit more color on the outside just like on those apples, and then less on the front, make it look a little bit darker. Like we have some shadows out here on the outsides. Now I can come back in, do that same thing over here on these sides, since I didn't do it the first time around, and leave the center lighter. So here I'm just showing what you can do. You could do this with any pencils. You can do this with these watercolor pencils without using any other tools or techniques, but just a little bit of blending. Now let's add in color for these leaves just to help us get a finished idea of what this image will look like. Next, we're going to do a few fun techniques with our white pencil. And I am really excited. You can do some really cool things with the white pencil. And before I do that, I don't want to leave this undone. We can't leave this undone. I'll color that in real lightly. And let's color this cat as well, just for some more shading examples. So this one, I think I'll come back in here in a little bit and show you how once this is colored, what we can do with that blender pen to make it look even more realistic. So I am, for the most part, going to be using a swirling pattern here. Now, when I get to the edges, I have to get those edges colored in. I want to get them colored in at least as dark as the rest of the image. So that's where I may not be using a swirling pattern. But we'll come over all of this, add color over all of it, and then I'll show you, because the cat's definitely a little bit different than an apple or a basket, how I do shading on the cat, for example. And keep in mind that a lot of times with your shading, you can use the stamp to help you, to show you where you need to add those, those shadow lines or the, the shading. So with the cat, anywhere you have like legs or different parts of the body, body coming together, you're going to have shadows. So 
down here in between these front legs, you are definitely going to have shadows down there. Down here, anything round, I always shade the side. So with the legs, I'll put a little bit of a little bit more shading on the sides, a little bit at the bottom. The tail will be darker at the bottom than it is on the top. Over in here, we'll do this. There's going to be some shadows down in here. And then the body is round. So I typically always add a little bit of shading on the edges, just like I did with the basket. Add a little bit around the face. Down here under the chin, we'll definitely have some darker colors. But a lot of times, the lines on the stamps itself give you clues for this. So on the apples, there's some extra lines where some of those shadows are going to be. And a lot of other stamps have those same, same lines to give you clues for where to add some shadows in. Okay. Now let's play around with the white pencil and do a few fun things with it. And then we will come back to this and get into some more actual techniques. Now with the white pencil, you can use it just like with the right other pencils and just color with it. So here is one of those stamps from the Cottage Rose stamp set. I think this is so pretty. I stamped it with Night of Navy ink and I did stamp a couple of times on my Stamparatus just to get a little bit darker line. Now, all I'm doing is coming in with this white pencil and coloring over top of this. You can use this pencil on darker cardstock to get lighter color, as you can see here, and a really, really beautiful effect. Now on these petals, I was coloring one petal at a time. I was starting closer to the center with, and I'm pressing harder to get a darker, darker white. I don't, that sounds, that sounds, uh, oh shoot, the word isn't coming to me, like an opposite like a contradiction. I can't, I can't think of the word, but start in the center, close to the center of the flower. I'm pressing a little bit harder. And as I work my way out, I'm going to lighten up, give it a little bit less pressure and blend it to a lighter white out on the edge of that petal. Now, as I was doing this, I found, which I do a lot of times when I'm coloring is I like the way that looks, but the more color variation we get, the neater, the more dramatic it is going to look. So I'm going to come back in with my white and add it even heavier this time. I'm not going to say darker. Now my camera cut out for a second, so I apologize. So what I did, I just finished coloring this. I added a little bit more of that white down towards the center to give it a little more color variation. And I really love the way that turned out. Now this one, what I've done is I've embossed that same image with white embossing powder and I colored in lightly over that entire image with my white pencil. I might recommend coloring with regular white ink because this is raised a little bit from that embossing and actually is getting in the way of my colored pencils, but we'll still get an effect here that you can try yourself and you can play around with it. Like I said, with regular white ink, if you want, so I colored lightly over the entire thing with my white pencil. Now I'm coming in and adding another color over top. So this is the Calypso Coral Pencil, and I am just coloring over all of this. So this is a fun way you can get more color on dark cardstock. Now you can color on top of dark cardstock with the pencils and see what kind of an effect you get. But if you use that white pencil first, and then color over that with a color, you're going to get more of an effect. You're going to get more of that color showing over the white. So I thought this would be really neat to show how to do this. Now you may notice as I'm doing this because that embossing is there, I am knocking a little bit of the embossing off as I color. So my recommendation, if you wanna do this, I think the best way to do it would be to stamp your image first in any color you want do the coloring with your pencils. Once you're done with your coloring, stamp again. You would need to use a Stamparatus or a stamping platform to do this. Stamp again in the same spot over top and do your embossing that time. So that might be the best way. Here you can see little flakes of that embossing coming off. But 
here is just a fun way to get some color on a dark color of cardstock. Now let's get into some of the really fun techniques. And I have a few here to share with you where we get some really, really neat effects. First, let's use our blender pens. I'm going to bring in this image we cut, or the two images we colored first, bring in my blending pens, and I'll share just for a second about them. So blending pens come in packs of three, and I can link you in the video description below to all the products I'm using today with ordering links. Now, they come in sets of three. You can, if you want to, mark these and keep one, and they're double-ended, keep one end for different colors. Like this one could be for green, this one could be for blue, red, orange, purple, and pink if you want. But there's really no need to do that, and I'll show you why. Now what these are, they are filled with a solution. I'm not exactly sure what the solution is, but it causes these colors to blend together really, really beautifully. So I shared this in my example right at the beginning where the blender pen makes this blend together so beautifully. But I'll do one of these apples to show you. I'll just color right over it and look how smooth and nice that looks. We don't have any more and I'll show this to you up close here in just a second. So I have colored this one and I've colored this one and you don't have any more of that little bit of roughness that you get with the colored pencils. Now if I want to switch to another color, this is where I said you can keep your separate tips for different colors if you want but you don't really need to. Just color on a scrap piece of paper until you don't see any more color and then you can move on to your next color. So let me do a little bit of this brown and I want to blend this make it look a little bit smoother. And you'll be able to see the difference between this one and these other strips down below that I have not used that blender pen on. So just a really beautiful effect if you feel like you're not great at coloring or you are not one to take a lot of time to color. This is the perfect way to get beautiful coloring with really not much work at all. Now, let's say after you've done this, you want some more color because when you use these blender pens, if you're using shimmery white cardstock and if you've colored evenly, then you may end up with just a perfectly smooth color. Well, maybe you want some shading. Maybe you want some darker color. You can come in and color again, add some more, make it a little bit, bit darker, or Here's kind of a fun way of doing it that I like is just to put that blender pen right on the tip of the pencil and then come in and blend that together with what you already have and you're going to get some extra color that way. So that is, that's a few things on the blender pens. Now let's look at a couple of other things. This is where it gets really fun in my opinion. I will mention water painters. This is similar to the blender pen. I use these quite a bit to create watercolor effects on my cards. You can use the water painters, okay? These are watercolor pencils. If you apply water, you're going to get blending. You're going to get some neat effects. So I can squeeze this. It has water in the barrel here. I can squeeze a little bit. I don't want to get a ton of water coming out, but I do want a little bit. And here you can see... This is blending that color together too. Now when I use this versus the blender pen, I'm going to get more of an actual watercolor effect. For, for me personally, what I find with these is I get the little bit more irregular pattern, whereas with the blender pens, I get more of a perfectly smooth color. So different effect, different technique, another thing you can play around with. Now, Let's do, this is my favorite. I actually have never done this before until I was getting ready to share this with you today. And I'm playing around with black backgrounds and watercolor paper with these pencils. So I'll tell you what I did different on these two and then we're going to create a couple of these. On this one, I've used watercolor paper. On this one, I've used shimmery white paper. And I think you'll be able to tell that with this one, the waters really moved and the colors really moved and blended like 
a watercolor painting or a watercolor background would. With this one, they didn't move around quite as well on that shimmery white cardstock. You can do this on a regular cardstock too, but with this in particular, I do really recommend using the watercolor paper because you're going to get a really, really blended, neat effect. So let's create a couple of these. I am going to use these two strips of watercolor paper and let's do some blues this time. Let's do some Pacific Point and some Bermuda Bay. And all I did to create these was create some scribbles irregularly across here. You can use a whole piece of cardstock if you want to, a whole piece of the watercolor paper. I end up with these strips sometimes left after I've created a full card front with watercolor paper. I end up with a lot of these strips. So I thought this would be a fun way to use up some of those strips and create a neat piece to go in the background of a card. And you can color all the way to the edge, but I found on this one, I had to cut off the edge here because it was irregular, it was a scrap, and I love the white along the edge. So I am not going to put color all the way to the edge. I'm just going part way. Now I wanna create two of these, and we are going to do two different things with them, and you can see the results. The results may be similar, but I do wanna show you Love to show you lots of different things you can play around with in your craft room. So we will do that here. So these are going to be a little bit different, but very similar. And if I want to, I can blend those colors. I could come in with the Bermuda and go over the Pacific Point some. There's nothing that says you can't blend your colors together. You can use three colors, eight colors, however many you want. So what we will do now is I am going to use, we're, we're gonna do this two different ways. Like I said, we're gonna use a water painter one time. We are going to use a spritzer full of water the second time. I'll mention this, sometimes I use spritzers full of rubbing alcohol because rubbing alcohol dries faster and it doesn't warp your paper as bad. But just to keep them separate, I'm using water this time. I mark a W on the cap and a W down on the bottom so that I know that this is my water spritzer and not, and then I put an A on the one that is the rubbing alcohol. So let's play around with this. Here is my water painter. We'll do this one first and I can squeeze a little bit, get some of that water coming out. I may want a little bit of water. I may want more, but it's nice to start with just a little bit and then you can always go back and add more if you want to. So I am squeezing here. I wanna get more of that water coming out to really get some good blending and lift those colors up. What you'll find is that the more water you apply, the more the colors are going to blend and kind of fade out as well. If you just get a little bit of water, you're still going to see those scribble marks, but the more you add, the more it is going to blend. Now, if you have some scribble marks that don't seem to wanna to move, just apply some water to them, let them sit for a minute, not really a minute, just a few seconds really, and then go back over and they will start to blend together a little bit more. So I am still adding some more water. This is blending some, I think it looks really neat, but I really love when it all blends together really well. So I'm adding some more water. Now, if you ever find that you want to apply more water than what is coming out of your water painter easily, you can just keep a little bit of water nearby and that's kind of an easy way to pick up more water without squeezing on the barrel. I had this, I had this water here for another purpose. You'll see here in just a second. So there we go. I think that looks really neat. I do want to clean that brush off before I put it back in the water or then I'll have some blue green water that may affect my next project I am going to create. So let's let that one set. That's the one we created with our water painter. Now let's do one with some spritzing. So again, it's my water spritzer full of water. And with this, again, I can play around with how much water I'm applying. I could just spritz it and let it sit, but I do, I, I do like the look of this with the water painter to help those colors blend together. So this is just a little bit easier way of applying that color. 
and then the water painter really helps to move the color around. So I don't know if you're noticing at first, some of these scribble lines up at the top didn't really wanna move, but after it has set here for a second, they really move around a lot easier. Now you can apply a lot of water. If, if you apply a lot of water and then you start tilting it and moving it around, you're going to get some swirling. You can get some really cool effects that way. But this just shows you what you can do with these watercolor pencils to create some beautiful backgrounds or beautiful additions to your projects like this one. I wanna show you one more technique. It's something I love to do when I do watercolor projects. I haven't shared for a while, so I thought I would share it here. Now here's one of the ones I created before that is already dry. And it's just a really simple way to add a neat effect. So here's my water. This is what I actually brought it in for. I'm going to get my fingertips wet and I can drip directly over top of this or I can do more of like a flick to get some smaller water droplets on there. Now, after they're on there and after they've set for a little bit, what I can do, I can either let this dry on its own, which would normally be my preference, but just to show you, and hopefully we're going to get an effect here, just to show you what this does, I'm going to dry this with a paper towel, which is an option if you want to dry your projects faster. And sometimes I got a little bit of an effect. I may need to let it actually sit here. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this. And then if you wanna see the end result of this, I will put a picture of this on my website and that if you use that link in the video description below. So we're gonna let that sit and it should pull some of that color out of those areas where the water is laying. So I hope you really learned a lot about pencils and watercolor pencils in this video. I hope it gives you some really fun ideas of things you can try in your craft room. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.